Hey everyone, today we're tearing down an MSI 1080 Ti Gaming X, which I have right here. So this is the new TI model. It's still a twin frozer cooler, but there's a difference here versus the 1080 Gaming X, the non-TI, this heat sink is a whole lot fatter. So the aluminum fins here are a lot wider uh, in both directions, and it is a uh, it, it will consume more space on the board and in the expansion slots. Now for comparison, I have here a 390X version uh, of MSI's cooler from a couple generations ago in design. It's a bit different on the face of things, but it is similarly fat. So this is not the first time MSI has gone this direction. We're gonna be taking the Gaming X apart, the 1080Ti I should say, uh, and a few things are gonna be done with this. One, how good is the cooler implementation? And two, we're gonna be sending over PCB shots to BuildZoid, who will be doing a PCB and VRM analysis for us. And we'll be uploading that on our channel shortly, so stay tuned for that. Uh, so let's get started. The Gaming X, I should say the 1080 Ti Gaming X, because they're all Gaming Xs when it's MSI. Uh, the 1080 Ti Gaming X is the same setup as all the other ones. Screws in the back plate, four in the center for securing the heat sink. These are spring tension screws, uh, and then we shouldn't really have to mess with a whole lot else. Before getting to the teardown, this is brought to you by our Patreon backers. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help us out with videos like this one and buildzoids and all the others because that funding helps us produce more content. So patreon.com slash gamersnexus if you'd like to help out there. Uh, and a side note there, we have a new merch store and anyone who is a current Patreon backer of the dollar amounts defined on the page, I have probably reached out to you with a shirt offer if you don't already have one. So keep an eye on your inboxes or message me if not. Let's get to it. So this thing, Phillips screws all over the backside. We have stupid star screws in the shroud. Fortunately, these are not relevant to what we're doing today. We do not need to remove these, I don't think anyway. Uh, I believe removing these will basically pull out that LED plate. So those aren't important, not mission critical, but they are there, so it's worth pointing out. If you wanted to take the entire thing apart to paint it or something, you would need those. Uh, also of note, GeForce GTX is on all these cards now, so I'm not sure if that's an NVIDIA agreement of some kind. Um, let's go ahead and start with the dismantling process. Is that enough to loosen things? No. Okay, so with this card, in order to... Sometimes you can just loosen these four and get the heat sink off, and then the rest are just for retention on the back plate. This one we will actually have to remove all of these as well because uh, actually this screw demonstrates it pretty clearly. That... Uh, that longer screw length means we're going through the back plate, which is fairly thick actually this time, through the PCB and then into the base plate. And the base plate is, of course, what actually is cooling things like the VRMs and, uh, and the MOSFETs and all that stuff, all the different parts of the VRM. Now one thing here, part of this project is so we can do thermal analysis because we're going to be mounting thermocouples to the MOSFETs and the PCB backside again, like we've been doing the last couple of cards now. That will allow us to see not only how well does the GPU cool, because that's kind of important, but not as much as it used to be, but how well does the VRM cool, uh, which is something we've become very interested in in the last uh, year or so. Two, four, five, seven, nine. 11 plus four, so 15, 15 screws to the backside, 11 of them are retention screws. All right, does it have thermal pads on it? Question number one. No, it has bumpers on it. These are rubber bumpers to offset height. Does it actually contact anything? That is the question. No, the answer is no, there's no contact. So that's questionable. Yeah, uh, so this backplate is for looks. Um, fortunately, there's a bit of dissipation area here to get rid of some of the heat on the backside, and the backside does get really hot on these things for the most part. Uh, so depending on how efficiently the front side is cooled, which we'll soon find out, um, we've even got some caps on the back side over here. So depending on how things go over on the front side, this could potentially trap heat and increase temperature on the back side of the PCB, but that's not always the case. Depends on the rest of the cooling solution. So we will find that out for our full review and uh, not speculate further. Just keep in mind, 
you'll want to check back for the full review to see how the back plate works because I'll do A-B testing with it on and with it off. And we'll have a probe on the back side to actually measure the back side temperatures because the back plate for a GPU doesn't really affect a GPU core temperature. That's not the point of it. It would affect, if anything, the back side temperature because that's where it is. Now we have to take out the screws for the I.O., the expansion mount, and I'll put those in the bottom right corner. There are three of these Phillips and then two for DVID, or excuse me, four Phillips and two for DVID. These are five millimeter. What did I miss? Oh, the top side screws, that's different. Okay, so this is a little different from what we normally see. They have decided to retain the IO cover with screws on the top side. Oops, that's a little too small. Rather than the uh, the back side, which is what we normally see. Okay, that's really interesting. Okay, so this swings out like a door. IO or uh, expansion cover there. And interestingly, this thing sweeps over for a support bar, which just seems really like a whole lot of of material to hold this thing on. So that's a bit different from normally, but I suppose it's partly because of how massive this card is. They probably need the support anywhere they can get it to make sure it's not going to rip things off the board when you mount it. Um, I'm going to leave the card flat and see if we can pull this off. We can. And we're going to get caught by the cables, which there's one over here for the LED, it looks like. I'll know in a second. And then there are two over here. No, that was a, f well, we'll see, I'll find out. Okay, so I got that off now that the PCB is exposed. Uh, do a tap on the wrist strap over here. Um, so what we've got, actually, this is kind of interesting looking. I'm, I'm excited to test this one thermally. Um, couple things here. One, we have two fan headers, I believe. We'll find out and a, uh, a power header over here, which is probably for the LEDs. And actually, oh, this would not be hard to verify. Where is this going? This cable is, uh, is it going to the LED? This cable goes to the LED, okay. So easily verified. So this cable here, right there, uh, that four pin, despite being a four pin, is going to the LEDs right here, the MSI nameplate, and then this cable definitely goes to the fans. That connects over here. This is another power cable. It's only black and red. So where does that go? It might be another LED or something. Not too important right now. Um, so for the, the cooling design, clearly we have a massive aluminum heat sink. There's your cold plate, I would guess, uh, with 99% confidence, this is nickel plated copper. And interestingly, that's screwed in to what looks like a retention bracket for the rest of the heat sink. Let's see, let's see what that actually does. If this is held on by screws, I'm not gonna be impressed, but I don't think it is. Okay, so it's more than screws. The hell are those for? It is soldered to the heat pipes, so that's good. And it's it looks like it's soldered, which is why I'm confused. It looks like it's soldered to the uh, aluminum fins as well. What's the point of that? Yeah. Not sure what the point of that is, but okay. We've got our thermal pads, which are actually clearly making contact here. So a few things here. This is your set of inductors or your chokes. Has a really fat thermal pad on it. It looks like a, maybe a two millimeter. One of the biggest ones I've seen on a video card. Looks like two millimeters. I think that is a two millimeter thermal pad, it looks like. So two millimeters for chokes and inductors, uh, or indu same thing. 
Uh, capacitor banks right here. That is not, I don't believe, that is not receiving direct contact. Instead, they have a channel here milled out of the heatsink fin. So you can see this, this part right here is actually taller than this part. Nothing special with the fins. They're not uh, L-shaped or anything like that, just fins. So these are cooled by air exclusively. Does that contact? What is? Actually, we can just look at it and see. Yes. Does it? Yeah, that makes contact. So there's a slight indent. So those make contact to this. That would be kind of dumb if they didn't, but it would also not be the first time we've seen that in the past year. Uh, these pads contact the MOSFETs, of which there are a million of them. Buildzoid again will analyze for us. And then these two over here are contacting uh, the components on this side with anything else. Nothing else special going on. So I'll throw these two screws back in and then we'll pull off the rest of the base plate. Okay, so the base plate's pretty interesting on this. We have this piece, which is contacting the VRAM. And this actually will go like orient like that. Didn't do what I wanted. As you can see, pads, 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 with the one missing VRAM module for a, a Titan XP. Did they f put a pad in that slot? Come on, look at this. MSI, what are you doing? I don't know if they, do they make a Titan XP card with this design? If they do, then what they've done is pull the design uh, without replacing a piece. That's possible. Actually, do they? Let's look it up. No, I don't think they make one. I don't think they make one of these for a uh, Titan X card. So what that means is they've stuck an extra thermal pad on there, which is not detrimental to your performance, but is pointless. So it just seems kind of silly. Um, well, anyway, extra thermal pad notwithstanding, what we have is a set of DDR or GDDR5X, as you would expect. We'll clean that off, but it is the same GPU as all the other 1080 Ti's. And some blank board space up here. It is a larger board. Most of that size is not for components as much as it is for the massive fans which I think are 90 millimeter fans. Actually, we can find that out really quickly too. 100 millimeter fans. So they're using 100 millimeter fans, which does require extra height. That's really the main reason for it. Um, we'll uncover these components for Buildzoid shortly. And other than that, it is what you would expect for a 1080 Ti PCB. Um, so the interesting points here, this is interesting. They have decided to make a thick, what looks like aluminum back or base plate that is separated physically from the VRMs. Now this, I would suspect, would isolate to some extent the temperature generated by this half of the board and this half of the board. This half being much, much higher potential to generate a whole hell of a lot of heat because that's what MOSFETs do. And they can also tolerate a lot more heat. So that's interesting. This side then is uh, taken care of by this part of the base plate which is nickel plated. And this part of the base plate contacts via thermal pads for the most part, and then is soldered, it looks like, to the aluminum fins on the heat sink, at which point you know how the cooling works. Uh, so let's, for the final piece here, just clean this off and then we'll uh, be able to close up shop. Some little liquidy thermal paste. Okay, good enough. There's your GPU, clean it up more later, maybe. Same GP102, 350 part as on the Founders Edition card. That should not surprise anyone at this point, but it's worth showing it. Uh, so, all right, that's the MSI card. Now at this point, what's left is basically just doing the, the testing. So we gotta do all the FPS testing, stuff like that. But uh, of import here, we've got some thermal testing to do without the stock set up so that would be with our thermal couples installed we have a standardized set of everything we do for that one addition here i'm probably going to try mounting a thermal couple to one of these uh, vram modules i'm not sure if i'm going to do that yet but that's something i want to do because this is really interesting to me how they've isolated it now, of course we need comparative metrics and i wanted to do this anyway so i'll probably start running these 
uh, retroactively on a couple cards or maybe just work on it with the EVGA and the ASUS cards coming in going forward. Either way, I'm hoping to have some VRAM measurements this time in addition to FET temperature measurements for the MOSFETs and the VRM and backside PCB measurements, which are really just to validate that the, the backplate is not complete garbage. So we'll have all of that, sending this photos of this off to BuildZoid. He'll do the VRM and power analysis. So we should have pretty full coverage of this card for you. If you're interested in that, subscribe for more. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or gamersnexus.net for the site and full coverage. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.